Dynamite report. Might as well. So no with Chris Jericho coming out to address Eddie Kingston. And Jericho comes out total babyface. He's uh, talking about how, man, you know, you brought something out of me I didn't know was still there. And yes, I didn't live up to my word on Sunday. You beat me, but I refuse to shake your hand. I want you to come out. I want you to apologize for you right now. And Kingston comes out and holy smokes, this guy. Man, oh, man. He should be doing a cameo. This guy cut the most amazing promo about how Jericho got in his head and he was right and... You know, he couldn't win the big one, and he lists all the people that he lost to. And Friday, he was thinking about not even going to do the match. And then he was at a fan fest, and four people came up to him and said, his article in the Players Tribune, the story of his life, convinced them not to off themselves. And he's in tears, and he said he was in tears after the match in the hotel room. And he said, at the end of the day, I don't need to shake your hand. This shaking hands thing ain't about me, it's about you. And I want to know what the problem is where you can't shake my hand. And so Jericho says, you're right. I have undying respect for you. One of the best matches of my career. Shake my hand. So they shake hands. And Jericho doesn't turn on him yet. Instead, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia hit the ring. And they go after the alleged baby faces. And uh, Jericho immediately goes down holding his neck. No one even hits him because, as you'll find out later, they wanted to make this seem like it was legit. Or at least, you know, make sense of the fact that Jericho actually is with 2.0. So he goes down holding his neck, and then uh, Santana and Ortiz come down with the bat. Jericho gets a hold of the bat, and he turns on Santana and Ortiz. And then out comes uh, Jake Hager, and he's acting all shocked. But then he turns on the baby faces, and they destroy them. They damn near kill Eddie Kingston with a powerbomb through a table <laughs> off the apron. It took it literally, I swear to God, it took every single one of the heels to make sure that Kingston didn't die. In real life, the heels made sure that Eddie Kingston didn't die. And then uh, Jericho announced this is the Jericho Appreciation Society. That's entertainment. And yes, his uh, heel character is a sports entertainer in the middle of AEW. This oh is a great, great opening segment. God, Matt Lee and Chris Jericho are going to be so would incorrigible be the right word to use. They are going to be so obnoxious during their promos. It is going to be it's going to be epic, probably is what it's going to be. Uh, just who can get more red and have their eyes bug out more as they yell back and forth. It's yeah, it's gonna be something. Hangman Page beat Dante Martin for the World Heavyweight Championship here on this show because uh, Dante was number one ranked, and I guess I had to get him out of the way. So uh, he beat him. Match was fun. And then uh, Hangman's putting him over afterwards when Adam Cole comes out, and Adam Cole announces he wants a six-man next week, and Hangman can choose two partners, and he has two young partners that are better friends with him than with Hangman. And he's strongly teasing it'll be the Bucks, as we'll get to. They announced that because the World Championship match did not go the allotted 60 minutes, that a standby match had been booked. I... <laughs> Pac and Wheeler Yuta. This was... That was a clash. Look, they sometimes they harken back to the past and do it well. There are other times that I don't think they, I don't think they did, and I don't like the fact that they just threw this on us last minute. Um, you know, it was fun. You know, fun glimpse into the future because those two guys are going to be there for a long period of time, and obviously Martin is probably going to be you know, whatever happens with his brother. I mean, him as a singles guy, he's like Jeff Hardy. He's our people are already. He's just you know somebody that people have really latched onto, but. Uh, I just, if you're going to do that, announce it ahead of time. And again, th that well, there's a bigger making issue. a big deal over the fact that you sh it should be a big damn deal that you're having a world title match. And the only thing I'm going to say to you, too, because of the, how Dave started the show yesterday with people think that Adam Page is a lackluster champion. If there's people that believe that, I can't say anything that's their opinion or whatever. But he's a softer champion in the realm of you have such big stars there you have omega and jericho and moxley and danielson and you go on and on and on and you have a young guy young champion who you're trying to build up really trying to get credibility to not saying that he doesn't have any but you're trying to get him over the top to really be at that next upper echelon level 
doing something like this, I mean, it makes for a nice match, makes for people to be happy. Oh, man, him and Martin together, that was cool. Damn it, is that really what you needed? I want every appearance by Hangman Page, the world champion, to be a big damn deal. And I think, again, they missed that last night. Is it the end of the world? Of course it's not. But I, I think that was a mistake. All right, well, let's talk about something completely different. So they announced that because this match didn't go an hour, they had a standby match, okay? The irony of this is they used to do standby matches all the time. At the end of the show, because you would do the main event, and let's say that the main event went, you know, 12 minutes, and you had nine minutes of TV time left. You can't just sit there for nine minutes, so they would have a standby match booked for the end of the show, okay? The standby match went in the middle of this show, and ironically, if they had not done the standby match in the middle of the show, they would have had to cut time at the end of the show when Regal went long. Yeah. That's why the standby match goes at the end, not in the middle. I know. It also depends on what territory you were in and how those rules worked and when you put what title match on. Usually they would put title matches on the end, but there would be some times where, again, for angle reasons and different purposes, they would be on. And again, every promotion did it a little bit differently. All right. So we had Brian Daniels and John Moxley versus J.D. Drake and Anthony Henry. What a what a beauty of a match. They brutalized these men. They killed them dead and then uh, Regal was out at ringside. They interviewed Regal afterwards. He did the promo. And uh, and as noted, he went a long time, and he talked about how, you know, people knew the name Regal because of Brian Danielson because Danielson had mentioned him year after year after year. And he saw, he left WWE, and he didn't watch any wrestling, but then he heard that Danielson was still talking about him. So he watched the show. He saw that it was going to be Danielson versus Moxley, the paper, and he thought, I got to be there, like all of us. And then he showed up, and the rest is history. So they're going to smash everybody, according to William Regal. It was a it was an up and down promo. I mean, it did go too long. It was um, an emotional promo, and also a good promo, and also a too long promo, it, all look, at the it, same time. It was a promo for the people, but you know what? For it was more of a promo for them. You know what I mean? And I know you got to hit your cues and your times and all that sort of thing. But hey, I'm good with it. We had a Dark Order segment, which was poor Adam Page shows up, and they, they all think they're going to be his partner, and he has to tell him, I actually asked Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And they all go, ah, ah. but you can see that there there's a rift here. And then in our standby match in the middle of the show, Pac beat Wheeler Yuta. It was fun, but um, it was honestly unneeded. And uh, they didn't know that, obviously. But actually, you know what's funny? I guess they'd already but, announced it. But yeah, this did come after the Regal segment, so they could have just pulled it. But once they announced it, I mean, they pretty much had to do it. I don't know. I See, I was surprised by that, too, because I didn't remember in the update yesterday if they had announced it before we started doing the show. But that was a match to me. It's like, okay, then put it on Rampage with Swerve. You make it a big Rampage. I, and you wouldn't have missed a beat, I don't think. We had Adam Cole and the Young Bucks and Red Dragon have a meeting. And long story short, Cole was going to announce that the Bucks were his partners. But when the Bucks heard that he was going to do it, they were like, we ain't doing this match. We're not doing anything involving Hangman. And so he goes, uh, I was going to ask them. And he storms off because he's all upset. Because the key is, he told Hangman, these guys are better friends with me than with you. And so when they said, we're not going to do a match with you if it's against him, Oh, he did not like that one bit, and off he went. We had an absolutely, totally rushed segment where FTR and Tully, I think FTR turned babyface and fired Tully, is totally out of the blue, rushed, they cut away, and the announcers were flabbergasted. So presumably we'll have some follow-up. Well, and, and what's shocking there is Tully, the whole thing with kicking Oli out of the horseman, was talking about the snot-nosed kid, and you don't have time for your family. I'm your family. We're here to win titles. That's what the horsemen are about. I mean, that was dead set for that. Maybe they'll still do it, but it, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like that was the chance. Then we had, uh, it was almost exactly as I figured they would do it, but it was a little different. And they did it on this show. They had the... Uh, Andrade Hardy family office board meeting. And they announced that there would be a board meeting. I'm like, the board meeting stops and Matt Hardy's already talking about how Andrade wants him fired. So I felt like I was missing a giant part of the story. So they have this uh, deal and, you know, the storyline was that Matt and private party had voting uh, majority. But uh, long story short, private party ended up voting for Matt being fired. 
They attack him. They beat him up. Darby and Sting run out. They get beaten up. And then Jeff Hardy's public domain music hits. That sports center was on. And he rushes down to the ring. And this the 3,000 fans there. This is why I argue it shouldn't be here. 3,000 fans went nuts. It was great pop. But, um, you know, I argued yesterday, don't do this tonight. Do it like next week. Get a, get a bigger crowd. And when I, when I look at the show and all of the stuff that they did on this show, they didn't need this one on this show. They could have very easily done it next week. But they did it here. And, I mean, it worked. But I feel like it would have worked better elsewhere and on a less busy show. We had uh, Swerve and Tony Nese setting up a match for Rampage on Friday. No spoilers, but no spoilers on who's going to win Swerve versus Tony Nese, everybody. <laughs> or whether it was good or not. Really? Wardlow did an interview. That's a great interview. The gist of it is that he's still under contract to MJF, but he's not going to work for him anymore. And he's going to go win the TNT title. So that match is next week. And, uh, you know, every I always talk about things, and then, you know, you hear some... It's usually the same guy, by the way. It just is an inability to listen or think, or both, which is a double whammy. So somebody come up with the idea. They go, I got an idea. Wardlow comes out next week, and, uh, you know, he's going to have the TNT title match. Somebody emailed me this. This is one of my idea, but I thought it was clever. And uh, he comes out, and then before the match, MJF goes, you know what, Wardlow? You don't want to work for me? I've seen the air of my ways. You deserve to go out on your own. I'm releasing you from your contract. With a 90-day no-compete clause. <laughs> so then Wardlow can't have his championship match. And so I come with I, I mentioned this idea, and then this idiot goes, Oh, what a great idea, taking Wardlow off TV for 90... Bro. Hello? Where did I say you're taking him off TV for 90 days? I said he couldn't compete. He can be on uh, every single solitary show powerbombing people out to death if you yeah. want, but he can't wrestle. Say, why do I have to explain down? this to people? Good God Almighty, and you ask why I yell so much. Mm -mm -mm. We had Jungle Boy and Lucha Swords versus The Acclaimed. So I had no idea there was a world title match because I wasn't on social media like two hours before the show. Was this announced at all on social media? Or did they just oh. announce in the middle of the show that there was a tag team championship match? <laughs> can someone help me? So anyway, they had a tag Fired team up. championship match that caught me completely off guard. <laughs> Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy versus the Acclaimed. And uh, it was a good match. And uh, they won with the double springboard Doomsday Device uh, to retain the tag team titles. Thunder Rosa. Again, why, do, why do you need well, to Hold on, have let me get that. through this quick. Oh, Thunder sorry. Rosa, Layla Hirsch, we only got a minute. Thunder Rosa, Layla Hirsch. Exactly, exactly as I uh, laid it out yesterday. Thunder Rosa wins. Match in her hometown next week. In a cage on her birthday. So it's likely going to be the big championship title change that we've talked about. Likely coming, probably coming next week. And finally, Scorpio Sky and Sammy Guevara. Uh, we can talk details later, but uh, Scorpio Sky beat him after interference from uh, the whole crew, including Paige Van Zandt, who ended up beating up Ty Conti, the girlfriend of Sammy Guevara, and then... Paige signed her contract on Ty's ass. He's lighter, and he worked the whole match. Yes. <sighs> Bug fly in your mouth? I missed that. Jared, can we get a replay? Was that on film? I swallowed a bug. I hope ah. it was that big one. Ah. Mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and you explain. a bug. She's cackling. She's never, I've never seen her so happy. <laughs> What's God trying to tell me when I was in the middle of that speech and a bug flew in my mouth? Talk less? I guess. <laughs> I don't, God, there's not please. a meaning in everything, dude. Sometimes bad things just happen for no reason. A bug food in your mouth. You think you think, you, you think it was bad? How do you think the bug feels? If I'm walking down the road and I see a giant mouth, I'm not going in it. <laughs> right? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.